Welcome back. This is an Alex homework video on naming binary ionic compounds. Binary means two parts. So there's a front part and a second part. So you've got two elements that are combining. And ionic, normally an ion is, is something charged. So the first word in your binary compound is going to be a positive charged uh, ion. And the second one is going to be a negatively charged ion. So they become ionic in order to become they become an ion in order to become stable, more stable than they were before. And then once they're an ion, they work just like magnets. All positives will simply attract all negatives and they just stick together, uh, just like your socks do in the dryer. They, it's just electricity. So you're going to put them together. Once they are a compound, they're always going, their charges always equal zero. So since they're always going to be equal zero, you can guess how many goes with each. You want a certain number to balance the other charge. So if you have a charge of plus, plus four and you have a charge of negative two, it's going to take two negative twos to balance with the plus four and you'll be able to get the empirical formula. The empirical formula is just a ratio. How many to how many? Is it a two to one ratio? Is it a two to three ratio? That's the, that's the empirical formula. Then you're going to need to name the compound. And how you name it really has to do with the cation. If you have a representative element, which or a, uh, also called a, um, like a mainline element or something, a main group element, those, remember, are anything in the first and second column. So that's the, the first and second column, and then the last six columns. So anything in the first and second combining with anything in the last six um, is going to be just regular names. You're just going to say calcium, calcium and oxygen. You'll just say calcium oxide. If you have uh, metals from the middle section, that little valley in the periodic table, so from scandium, the column scandium column to zinc column, you should always have a periodic table when you're listening to these videos. Otherwise, you will be missed totally confused. Anything in the middle there, you are going to have multiple charges. So you don't, you can't just guess. You can't just say, oh, that's going to be positive two or that's going to be positive four. You have no idea. So they, they can be multiple ones. So whatever you have is going to have a name that gives it away. Let me give you some examples. Let me just do a few of these. Magnesium is in group two. So this is a representative element it, or a, or a um, main group element. And so this is a, a metal. This is a non-metal. Bromine is in group 7. So both of these are representative elements. That means when you name it, you're just going to say magnesium. Okay. So first of all, let's put it together. Magnesium has positive 2. And then you're going to put bromine beside it. Okay. Now, how many bromides are you going to need to balance this positive 2? So I've got negative 1 and positive 2. I need two negative 1s to balance with two positives. So I'm going to give a subscript here to the bromide. So it's going to be MgBr2 will be its empirical formula because this has to balance. All of these will act the same way. They add up to 0. So you simply double or triple uh, the smaller one in order to get it to be um, equal to the other one. Okay, what about its name? Since this is a representative element, it's in group two, remember one, two, the first two columns or the last six columns, you don't have to worry about um, special names. You just say magnesium, and you have to learn how to spell these, and then bromine turns to bromide because it's second. Magnesium bromide. Okay. All right. Rubidium works the same way. Rubidium is in group one. So you know that if you're looking at a periodic table, it's in group one. So these are representative elements. So I'm not going to make any, there's no funny names. So you're just going to call it rubidium. First of all, let's make an uh, empirical formula. I put rubidium first, bromine second. I've got one positive and one negative. Okay. They're already balanced. They already cancel down to zero, so I don't need any subscripts uh, for either of these. It's just RB, RB, BR. Okay. 
Now, how do I name it? I simply say rubidium. Rubidium. And then bromine turns to bromide. Do you see there's two words here? It's not one word. It's two words, rubidium, bromide. The two word name, since it's a binary, binary means two parts. Iron is weird. See, sometimes iron is positive two. Sometimes iron is positive three. There's even other cases of other charges. So any of these ones in the middle, from scandium to zinc, or even anything under the stairs like lead, all of these are uh, can have multiple charges. And so when you, when you put it together, you have to name it a special way. So first of all, let's do the easy part. Let's put it together. I've got Fe. Now hold in your mind that it's positive 2 because that it's told you know it's positive 2 because you can see that cation and then Br. So I've got positive 2 here, negative 1 here. So how many negative 1s am I going to need to balance? I need 2 because I have positive 2 and I need a negative 2. So I need 2 of these to make negative 2. So this is Br2. Let's do it over here. Fe is now in your mind positive 3 because you can see that it, this charge is positive 3. Here's Br again. How many negative 1s am I going to need to balance a positive 3? Well, I'm going to need 3 to balance a positive 3. Okay. I hope you're with me so far. Now we have to name. You can't just call this iron bromide, because this would also be iron bromide. You can't have one name representing two different things. So it's going to have to be giving its own name. This has to be a different name than this. Well, smart people simply said, well, let's make it as easy as possible. If this is iron with a 2+, plus, let's call it iron 2. If this is iron with a 3+, plus, let's call it iron 3. So I'm going to look here and say, oh, this iron is balancing with two negative ones, so that must be iron 2, and I'm going to call it iron and I'm going to use a Roman numeral in parentheses. Okay, so iron 2 is together. So when you're typing it, it's iron in apostrophe, uh, ii apostrophe, or not, um, parentheses, ii parentheses. So this is like it's one word, space. And now you have the bromide like you normally do. Okay, because the bromide's not the problem, it's the iron. The iron has two different charges, so you can't call it iron. You have to call it something else. So we're going to call that one iron 2. This one we're going to call, call iron 3. Iron 3. Bromide. A lot here. I hope you're getting, getting along. Just ask me in class.